Can you, the two of you, yo, can you guys come down the front right here? Right in the front, right in the middle right there, man. Okay, hey, let's get started. Um, we ready? Okay, so, um, hey, I, w I want to, it's create, it's really, it's weird energy. Um, okay, hang on, we're gonna start. Uh, if you're not, by the way, if you're watching on the stream, um, very strange energy here today. It's, it's rainy and cold and everyone's kind of like, yeah, I don't know, it's odd. It's just one of those things. Okay, so um, I, I wanna make a couple of announcements as we, uh, before we get started. But hey, gra make sure you grab a seat though. There's seats down in the front, down here. Okay, I, I have a couple of announcements. Hey, make sure you get a seat though, now. Like, don't wait, okay. Um, so first thing, can you put up the, the first slide? Hey, so do, do you uh, remember Mariam who was here from Afghanistan? When, so when she left Afghanistan, uh, it was like 120 degrees. And, uh, but now it's cold because winter has set in. And uh, if, if you, anyone happens to have a, like a, a, a winter jacket, uh, that's, that's not a nice winter jacket, because you all have like, people have so many jackets. You have so many things. Like, oh my God, it's terror. It's amazing. So if, anyway, you remember she's kind of small. So if anybody does, see me after class. All right, I'm trying to hook her up with a, a jacket. All right, uh, also, um, we are, so we are starting the dialogues, the conversations uh, with Afghans, with, with people in Afghanistan. And, um, you know, So we're starting the dialogues and um, things are really tough there. And I don't know if you've been watching, but uh, the protests that are happening in Iran are also happening in Afghanistan. And people are really s standing up to the Taliban. Um, and so in order for them to participate in the dialogues with you, the global dialogues, uh, they, it costs them money. Like they, their, their economy basically is in a complete free fall. And so I'm uh, just trying to raise some funds and whatever we raise in here, I'll match it for sure. But, it, but like five bucks will give an Afghan, one of the students, these are almost all university students, will allow them to have two dialogues with us, um, which is big. And, and, uh, and it's, and it's kind of risky for them as well to do that. So that's my Venmo. So if you want to chip in, and uh, I'm chipping in, obviously. So we want as many Afghans to participate, in particular women. And so if you go, go to the next slide. Dude, you're the dog. Thanks, man. You can just pay cash, too. And, uh, and this happened just the other day. There was a bombing at a... At a testing center for it was mostly young women Hazara from the Hazara community and and uh, somebody let off a, set off a bomb and about 50 young young people were killed um, just to, it's just unbelievably tragic like how much worse like it's just like how much worse could it be like wh why um, so 
women, men and women were protesting, but these were a group of women who were protesting, and then Taliban showed up. And you look at him, he's like pointing his gun at, at a woman because she's protesting the death. I mean, you know, it's just like, like what a dick. So it seems beyond that. But anyway, the next slide, the next day, the women, these, this is all in Herat. So we are working with students. Some of these women in Herat, look, at, look, they're risking their lives. This isn't like I'm going to do a march across campus because I, of some, I don't know, right? Because of toxic masculinity. This is like, look, I'm going to march when the Taliban has said, if you march, we will effing shoot you and and they're marching anyway just saying like no we don't care and these are these are the kind of a lot of the people who want who want to talk to us in here so I just want to say that um that it's just it's like oh my god right like I have to brave the rain here to come to class like the I find the rain annoying but imagine that you're taking your life in your in your own hands by doing that. And so, anyway, it's just it's really it's just profound, man. It's really profound. So anyway, uh, I just I want to say that to you. The second thing I want to say, if you go to the next slide, um, we do we are also starting our dialogues with Yemen, and Yemen has been in a war, uh, a civil war for about five years, longer actually, but. Uh, the truth just the truce just ended and it is not being renewed, which means that, you know, at one point in time, two years ago, it was estimated that 80 percent of the Yemeni population is experiencing um, uh, uh, just, um, just experiencing malnourishment, man, just just going to bed hungry every night. Anyway, uh, these are a lot of these dialogues, these conversations with Yemen and with Afghanistan, they happen early in the morning. And they happen early in the morning for us, those times, because there are security issues for them. So when you see inter global dialogues at 9 or 9.30 and the Yemen dialogues are going to change to 8 a.m. in a couple weeks with daylight savings time, but, you know, this is, these are security issues at their end, okay? This is not like, uh, I, we're, not, we're not waking up, get, asking you to wake up this early just because. It, 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 it matters. And so anyway, when you see that, just know that, that that's those early dialogues, that, that's what it's about, okay? So I, I just wanted to say that. Um, and if you find yourself really fascinated by global geopolitics and this sort of thing, then you may want to jump into one of these Yemen dialogues. Because how often, when do you have the opportunity to, um, to have conversations with people whose country is really at war? So, uh, okay, let's go to the, so I'm, I'm call, I'm, we're going to talk about Korea today. And uh, and we're going to just talk about a few different things that I think will be interesting at the end of class. We're going to do a role play of sorts. Um, and uh, I, I want to give you a little background on Korea that will, that will help to really understand some of why what we're talking about today is really fascinating because it, it's quite fascinating. Go, go to the next slide. So first off, Korea, um, I'm sure... I know, of course, most of you don't pay. I mean, you're young, right? You're not paying attention to these matters. But let me tell you, Korea is a is a socioeconomic geopolitical miracle. What what Korea has done, you know, in my lifetime, we'll say in the past fifty five years or so, has been something that we've really never seen in human history um, to, to reach a level of modernization, growth and development that we just have never seen. Uh, I, I, it's really, if you want to be, you know, many of you are probably are fascinated by, uh, you know, Korean culture and 
K-pop and this sort of thing. But, uh, you know, it, it all comes from something. And if you look at those numbers there, South Korea in 1965, the GDP is 3.1 billion, and now it's 1.8 trillion. The, you know, Korea, you know, in 1965, the economy was, the, you know, the, the country of Ghana was wealthier than Korea. The country of Algeria was wealthier than Korea. Dude, Tunisia was wealthier than Korea. And now Korea is the 10th largest economy in the world. And so if you don't, if you don't think about, you don't have to think about a lot really, right? But that, just that alone, if you have any interest in really kind of understanding, you know, global issues or the war, anything at all, that alone would lead me as a sociologist to say, damn, what, what happened? Like, what happened? What did they do? And which is, of course, what it has maintained my interest in Korea. I first started, uh, I was first interested or introduced to Korea back in the mid 80s with, through uh, some of the early to mid 80s when I had some graduate student friends from Seoul. And I started to really kind of dig into Korean uh, geopolitics and economics and, and familiarize myself with the culture and a lot of things. And so, I, you know, I became just fascinated by Korea. And I have watched it, you know, over the course of the past 40 years just expand. And by the way, you know, uh, the U.S. 23 trillion in 2021 last year, right? So just to kind of give you a sense of, of where the U.S. is. Can you go to the next slide? So, um, but this growth has not been even like it's very difficult right when you have growth that happens in in over the course of you know like uh wait can you just can you go back t to something right yo listen um i want to say something you know one of the things that's really sustained me as a teacher and has allowed me to uh, continue to do the kinds of things I do is because I see things like this and my mind goes to two words. And the two words are like, holy shit. Like, what happened? And I start asking myself questions. And the questions are the things that guide me and lead me and lead me to keep asking more questions. And I just want to know more and I want to know more, right? And not everybody is kind of leans toward asking those kinds of questions because we all have different things that we like to do and things that really interest us. For me, I like asking questions and I like answering those questions. That's how it is that ultimately I became a teacher, I suppose, although I'm not teaching. I'm just asking questions. And there are many of you who are similar to me, I suppose, that you really, really like to ask the questions. And so I, I just really want to pause on this because this is one of those places in life where if you want to understand this planet, you want to understand human beings. These are the kinds of things that jump out that you say, man, how, whoa, okay, that's really worth exploring. So the other side is that whenever a country, if something grows as quickly as Korea has grown and expands, it's never going to happen evenly. And so Korea has really, um, is kind of is confronting something today that's going to be very very difficult for korea to um to overcome and by the way how, can i see a raise of hands like how many of you are aware of korea's cultural positioning in the world like the korean wave you know like food and and uh and music and K-dramas, and K-film, and so on and so forth. K-fashion, and K-beauty, and everything K. K-gaming, and K-animation. Like, how many of you are really aware of Korea's position in the world? I'm just, raise your hands high. I just want to really see you. And, and out of curiosity, how many of you have 
never heard, how many of you, how many of you have heard of BTS? Huh. And how many of you have heard of Black Pink? Huh. Okay. Yeah. Huh. All right. Yeah, that's interesting. All right, so listen. Uh, I want to give. I want to talk about a couple of things that are going to frame the conversation we have today. Go to, go to the next slide. Um, so, a couple of the struggles that Korea is undergoing right now is trying to figure out how to continue to grow at, at the pace at which um, uh, that 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 makes sense, that allows them to sort of sustain. You know, to continue to grow. It's very difficult to do. So I wanted to point this out just because this is something that we're going to talk about a little bit with our, with our uh, volunteers today. Just like, just imagine, this is another thing that you can imagine, right? So here's housing price. This is the average apartment price in Seoul. And almost every, everyone has an apartment. I mean, you know, you have a, you, I mean, you own, but I mean, they're, they're you know, um, modular independent homes. Look at in in you know in in 2017 it was five hundred thousand dollars. This is U.S. dollars. And then look, just three years later, it's almost eight hundred thousand dollars. So imagine in three years, the average price of an apartment appreciates by that much, right? Like and whereas these are the other kind of larger cities in in Seoul, and so like oh my God. So you can imagine. The, the, it's a country that's also very much in turmoil. Next slide. Um, and as a result of that, young people, and we're going to talk about people in their 20s a lot today, uh, that have, are, you know, having to work multiple jobs, man, are just like, because when apartments go up that, when, when the, 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 the price of apartments is that steep, you can assume salaries and wages are not increasing at the same level. And so, you know, look at, look at just like, look what's going on. Like people are just taking on any other jobs. Just people are just trying to get going and survive and, and make a way for themselves, right? And live a life, like live a life that their parents were able to live. Um, next slide. Uh, so Korea is one of the most educated countries in the world. And we often talk about populations of people who are 25 to 34. And that's because, you know, it's, you've, you've had enough time to get through college. And we're not including older generations who are much less likely to go to college. This is like a really pivotal year. So when we talk about under, wanting to understand how educated a country is. So look at Korea. About 70% of Koreans aged 25 to 34 have, have, have four-year college degrees. Now, just hold that. 70%. And the U.S. is 40%. And there's another certain percentage of people in the U.S. that have two-year degrees, but 40% versus 70%. And then look at Germany, Saudi Arabia. I put Saudi Arabia because there are so many Saudis in here. And China, Nigeria. Like, you know, look at this. So, what do you do? How do you get there? Like, what's going on in Korea with education? And what's it mean? And so this is what I want, I want to talk about this today. So we're going to have some... Um, yeah, we're gonna one final thing. Next slide. I'm just giving you some data here because this is data that I'm going to draw on in our conversation. So fertility rate is that every childbearing woman has to have 2.1 children in order for a population to reproduce itself. Without 2.1 children, the population can't continue at its current rate. It's going to decline. Okay, got that? Makes sense? every childbearing woman. And the reason it's more than 2.1 is because some women can't have kids. And so that means they just physiologically, not about they don't want to have kids, they can have kids. And so it's got to be a little bit above two. And Korea is 0.9, meaning the Korean population is actually decreasing. And so this is the standard sort of population pyramid. You've got to have a lot of people at the bottom to take care of the people at the top because people at the top require 
a lot of work. And then this is 1960, here's 1990. Look at how the bottom is really starting to grow up, but the very bottom gets smaller, 2010, and this is 2030. And there's not enough people down here. You gotta have workers. No country can grow economically without people at the bottom of its population pyramid filling the jobs that need to be filled. And so every country is, is in an, that runs into this runs into ultimately a period of decline unless you can find some way out of it like like AI or something like that right artificial intelligence robots I mean something but otherwise you you can't you can't continue to grow and so Korea highly educated the more education a population has the less children people in that population has so you take Korea as being the really most highly educated country in the world we can expect that Korea is going to have one of the lowest fertility rates in the world. And so what does that mean? And so we're going to, I want to talk a little bit about what this means. So, hey, can you, um, why don't you, why don't you guys come down? Let's have, so Leia and Junho and why don't you, yeah, let's come up. Let's have our volunteers. We're going to talk a little bit about this. Yeah, you can sit right there. It's kind of, this is cool. This is, we're gonna, and, and, and as we're having this conversation, what I, what I want for you all to think about is just, yeah, just to ask questions. Just, to add, just throw questions out. Like, what are we talking about? Hey, so can you in, introduce, introduce yourselves? Where are you from? What's your story? Quickly. Okay, so, um, hi, I'm Chaewon. I'm I go by Che, and I'm from South Korea, and I'm a freshman at Smeal College of Business. So you're a first year student. So you just yeah. got here. Yeah, I just got here. But wait, but you grew up in Cambodia, and mostly in Cambodia. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, hi, my name is Leah. My Korean name is Hyunseo, and I'm currently a junior in Penn State, majoring in accounting. Mm -hmm. I mostly grew up in Korea. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Do Hyung Kim. You can just call me Do. Do. Uh huh. Right. And then I'm senior, majoring in statistics. Uh huh. Hello everyone, my name is Junho Kwan and I'm from South Korea. My major is economics and currently I'm a junior as well. Do you guys know any Koreans by chance that major in something like theater or <laughs> literary studies? I don't know. I know one Dude, is that like, yeah. I mean, is that even possible? Would you get, would, would they revoke your citizenship or something? <laughs> theater you know all right hey so can we go to the, go to the next um hey so this term here Joseph hell Joseph can you can you guys can you talk about this a little bit I, I gave some of the data I mean I laid a few things out can you talk about have you heard of this before yeah definitely yeah okay can you can you all talk about this I mean, it's like a term because like you've all seen it, like how expensive it is to afford an apartment in Seoul, the capital. And it's really like it's where most people would want to live in, have a job, have their housing. But because it's so competitive to get a job or even like a good life there, we kind of call it hell, hey, <laughs> Joseon. Hey, how, how do you, you say hey, hey? It's like hell, Joseon. Joseon. Yeah. Hey, should we say what Joseon is with that? Who wants to take that? Yo, Leah, you should take it because it was on the. So like Korea basically like started from Joseon dynasty and like during the time, the period, like so South, like Korea was definitely harsh. And like these days, since it is like still very competitive to live there, we have like compound words, which is like combination of hell plus Joseon dynasty, just as back then. 
the, the Joseon dynasty was about 500 years. Yeah. And, and everything that you, they, what we know about Korea today largely came together in the Joseon di- dynasty. Yeah. Including the characters, right? The alphabet right. and so on. Uh-huh. So say more about Hel Joseon. Say Hel. So, um, what, else, what else would the rest of you add to this? Like, like as long as I remember, like as a student when I was back in Korea, um, I was a high school student there. And I was actually preparing for like many exams there, and like, like ninety percent, like just most of the students, they studied more than like ten or twenty, twelve hours a day. So like, even I studied as much as I could, it was just um, the aver- average. So it w- I remember it was very competitive. And so the idea is that no matter what you do, you're like spinning your wheels to try to keep up with everybody else. Right. And you never know if you can because are you ever going to, in the, you know, it doesn't matter how much you study, you can always study more and there's always someone else studying more. And then when you finally get a job, maybe you get a job and you, or you're graduating, now you're competing with all these other people mm-hmm. and you're back on the hamster wheel. Mm-hmm. And then once you get a job, maybe you're not making enough money and you're working and working and working. And no matter what, it's like, it's like hell, it's like squid game. Right. in a way right so like like once before like back in high school i had a like talk with the academic counselor back in high school and then she said like even if you like study really hard during the vacation like that will just um leave you as like just the average because everyone's gonna like study hard during the period so that's, that's, that would sound like hell to most of you all, I would assume, right? Do you, do you guys want to add anything to, the, to this idea? Okay, so basically it means like it's more harder for our generation to proceed compared to our parents' generation. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, like it was okay to succeed like f- for our parents' generation, like when they had to get a loan and they were able to buy like apartments mm-hmm. but today it's really complicated and there's a lot of restrictions and it's more competitive so yeah literally it means it's hell for our generations compared to our parents generations mm-hmm. and also your parents were competing if your parents had for example a college degree they weren't competing with 70% of the population their age who also had college degrees. So the college degree is just the norm, right? And yeah, I mean, it just seems like, hey, well, let me, let's go to the next slide. So Leah, you said something about the, can can we talk about these, like give give the, tell people what these hag ones are. Like what, what what is this? Any, Any of you can jump in, but can we talk about the cram schools? Like you, who wants to take this? Okay, so Hagwon is like academic lessons that students take after school. It may be just um, tutor and or just normal lessons from another professional. So, you know, like Koreas, Koreans are, are like, they're really into education. So going to more than three Hagwons per day or like maybe five, it's really normal for Koreans. Uh, and, and, yeah, so to add on, there are like districts of Hagwons. So there are different districts within Seoul, and some of them are um, more. Some of them there are Hagwons populated within the district. So the street would be full of buildings, and within the building there would be full of Hagwons, like for math, science, English, foreign languages. There will be Hagwon for literally anything any subject you can think of okay so hang on so let's be clear here you go to school you wake up in the morning you go to school then you have lunch and you go to afternoon school yeah that's your regular school which is already longer than in most places in the u.s right like what's the average school day in korea how many hours basically um so normally it starts at eight I think, and then ends at three afternoon. Uh-huh. So that's only school. And okay, then so so right, so you, so everyone goes to school, uh-huh. right? Okay. So all right, go ahead. And then after school, um, when I was in middle school, 
I went to like two or three hog ones. It's basically line tutoring, you know, at line tutors. But um, in some tutoring, if you get, you know, they test you. And then if you don't get like high scores, they don't send you home. So, Wait, so you're, they lock, you get like locked into a hog one? So like basically <laughs> some, like a few days, I couldn't go to home like in the three or four in the morning. Wait, so I, in your way, in your pain, your parents are paying for this, right? It? Your parents pay for this. The hog yeah. ones you pay for. Yeah. Right. Like okay. $300, $400 a month. Uh-huh. Okay. And it could be a lot more. If you have a lot of money, yeah. obviously you're going to pay a lot of money. Okay. Wait. And so then how long might you stay at a hog one? So after school, like it's three o'clock, you would go directly to the tutoring or would you go home first? Or like, well, how do you do what? Yeah. And then you go. Yeah. What's the latest people stay at Hagwan? Like what, what, then until when? Like, so basically two or three in the morning maybe, but the thing is, um, wait, during my wait, middle school years. Well, wait, hang on, man, dude. <laughs> did, it, did, did anyone's brain just do what my brain did? And say, the, like, dude, did yours do that? Like the holy fuck? Because he just said two or three in the morning. Dude, did you really? Okay, can you, you gotta, you, okay, talk about that a little bit, man. How are you, first off, how are you guys sitting here? But go ahead, right? So, during my middle school year, the law got changed. Hagwon cannot, you know, hold students in their, I mean, until like 10 o'clock. So, basically, every Hagwon should end at 10 o'clock. But, um, you know, there's the other way. They get apartments in the private and then they collect students. And uh -huh. then they hold students until like two or three in the morning. So basically law doesn't mean anything. Wait, hang on. Can someone, Leah, can Junho, do you want to add to that? Yeah, so um, there, there was a restriction from the government not to like block students until 10 p.m. So Hagwons, they started to gather people at real like private places like Do Hyung mentioned or some Hagwons, they opened at 4 a.m. So like students would wake up at 3 a.m. and start their Hagwon at 4 a.m. Before they go to school. Yeah, before they go to school because the regulation like they can't stay until Hagwon for 10 p.m. So, so they start early. Yeah, they started early. Did you do Hagwon? Yeah, I did. <laughs> you did? So. Like, like in general, like most of like those like cram schools, they ended around like nine or ten p.m. But like, if you're like a really competitive student, and if you're like, if you're like one of those like students, you go to like specific cram schools that open up up until like two or three in the morning, and then when you're like done with those cram schools, you go to a place called Dokseosil which is like a place to study. It's like similar to the library, but like everyone's very focused, concentrated, no one talks. Wait, and you're, how old are we talking here? So like, when I was like in middle school, like to high school, I did the same routine over and over, so. So Wait, I'm so basically talking about my like. Okay, so hang, hang <laughs> so I wanna be clear here. 80, so those numbers up there, 83% of Korean, about 83% of Korean five-year-olds go to Hagwans. And about 36% of Korean two-year-olds go to Hagwans. Right? Two-year-olds, man. <laughs> Dude. Dude, so we're not talking two-year-olds aren't going five days a week till two in the morning. I mean, on a, the average, this was one particular study, the average is like, uh, you know, like two sessions a, a week. And for five-year-olds, it's like 50-minute sessions, five days a week. But the point is, you're doing tutoring. Everyone, 83%, dude, y'all, this is 83% of the Korean population. And, and here's what would happen. I just want to be clear about something. If you all, if 70% if of American 25 to 34-year-olds had college degrees, trust me, you all would be going to Hagwans also, because you'd be competing. 
as it is when you graduate from Penn State, you have the idea, okay, you're going to find a job. But if you were competing with twice as many people with college degrees here or back home, wherever you're from, if you're not from the United States, you'd be tutoring. You'd be like trying to elevate your, you know, get your game together, man. Okay, so wait, so you, do your parents drop you off there? Like, first off, there's, there's virtually very, can, we, can you say something about crime in Korea? Because people are probably wondering, like, how do you, how are you up at that hour in the morning when you're like 14 years old or whatever? But do you want, do you want to say something about crime or should I, how much crime is there? So, um, Korea is identified as really safe country. So, like, a lot of people go out at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. and we don't feel like we're not nervous like we know it's safe so like we yeah um it there's not a lot of crime in south korea mm -hmm. yeah virtually let me just i there's no violent crime bro you have a question yeah. so are there like extracurricular activities that you do or like, like do you guys do you guys play like sports or like you just literally just do school Who monday to friday sports, dude? I, don't, I mean, I feel like I would go insane if I was just doing school for like 15 hours a day. Like, would you not? <laughs> yeah. Look at them. Do they? I, do they no, look see, I don't know. Because you, you don't need like, I feel like you don't need 15 hours of school a day to like go out in the real world and make money. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I know. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, I got you. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Do you have sports? So most like, what students, do do? if you play sports after school, you're going to be like sports star. Like not you're not going to college. You're going to be like, yeah. you're going to play sports for your life. Yeah, so it's like really divided. So in other words, like if you, you can take the sports track, yeah. but the sports track is really going to be the sports track. Yeah, like yeah. besides the study wise. You're not so. going to, you're not going to be a scholar athlete. So you can't like be like well balanced all around? You can't be well, no, you can be, uh, but can you be well balanced all around? Can you, like you were in Cambodia for much of your childhood. How, how do you see this? I mean, I, when I moved to Cambodia when I was in an elementary school because of this, because I was like eight and I still had to go to those haoguans as an eight year old, like learning, trying to learn English, trying to do math. And I was like in grade two or three going to those haoguans after school. And my parents just thought like, oh, this is not it. Like I can't do this to my child. So that's why we moved out of Korea for my education to Cambodia to go to an international school. And there, it's like similar to here, like what you guys do, like go to school, come back, um, play sports, have extracurricular. So like my high school experience, my middle school and high school experiences are kind of different to my friends in Korea who mm -hmm. like have routines every day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but in Korea, yeah, if, you do want to play sports, you need to be a professional athlete. Like you unless, go that route. Yeah, unless you're going to be a professional athlete, you don't play sports. Yeah, because cause it's not, remember the list of, uh, that's not, that's like majoring in theater. Like majoring in sports is like majoring in theater. Koreans don't do that. Like, whatever. Like, just to add on it, like, they're like sports crime schools. So. Sports crime schools? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So well, like, if you want to like do well in sports, you can yeah. just go one of those there. So we, and we have that here, right? So we have right. sports camps, right? How many of you have been to a sports camp because you were trying to, yeah. But like a serious sports camp, like you were trying to be a D1, like a division one athlete sports camp kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you, so we have a similar thing. Okay. So you got the hog ones, so you cram school. Basically it is like, first off, school's intense in and of itself, right? Because like, I want to be clear, my school was not very intense. I went to a working class school. Um, it's where I learned how to, I don't know, make water pipes and bongs and things. Like I wasn't really serious. So like it was a very different world. And so, so school itself is really intense. What, but there must be, there are layers of school, right? Like the best schools, the worst schools, like, I have the idea that the worst schools, like the lowest level schools, are probably like our upper level schools here, if I could say. So school is already 
intense. Now you go to these cram schools and you're just being drilled constantly, right? Did you go to cram, did you go to cram schools, bro? Did you go to hot ones? Yeah, a lot. When I was um, in elementary school, like middle school and high school. What's that? Yeah, I went to a lot of hot yeah, ones. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Dude, I'm just like, okay, so let's, let's go to, to, hang on, we have a question from the stream. Wait, hang on. There's someone asking, how much does your standard of living drop if you're not living and working in Seoul? Just in Seoul. Do you, can you guys, can anyone answer that question? Do you know? Do you have a sense of that? Actually, I was born and raised only in Seoul, so I have no idea. Yeah. That. Yeah, I could answer that, but it would take me in a different direction. Okay. okay. Hey, okay, so listen. Let's go to the next can you, can, you, can you talk about this? Why don't you start? Do you, anyone ever heard of this? Anyone know what this is? Can you say what it is? So it's like Korean college entrance exam, basically. And, and right it's like pretty similar to like SAT in America, but the like biggest difference is the Sunung. You can only take it like once in a year. So like basically like on that day, like it's just super like very important and like as long as I remember like when you take Sunang it starts around like 8 in the morning and then it ends around like 4 30 in so like wait so, very you, so your whole basically. life is built if you're a Korean student okay your entire educational career starting when you're two years old going to your first <laughs> hagwon your entire educational career is to take that exam, right? right. There. Everything is that exam. There's yeah. like nothing else, mm -hmm. right? So if you're like sick or like not feeling well on that day, you have to like redo it in a year. So like it's very intense. So if you have a panic attack, if mm -hmm. you have whatever. Like so this like is it. when the sooning ends, there's a lot of articles that coming out. I'm talking about like, like students like suiciding because like a lot of like students, they just end up like suiciding because they didn't do well in the sunung and they feel like kind of like pressure under it. Or, so. or they, they, or they, they didn't, they don't think they, I mean, even mm -hmm. they may have had a panic attack and yeah. so they knew they didn't do well. And mm -hmm. so, man, okay, so what's on the sunun? So there are like four to five subjects. So like all the people, they take mathematics, Korean, English and like if you're like liberal arts students you're, you, you, you can like pick two subjects on the liberal arts side if you're like natural science student you can like pick the other like two subjects on that side and if you're over if you're done then it's it's the end of the sunung but if you take like for a language test you can like take it and then afterwards you, and then you okay and so you could do like korean history mm -hmm. and then also oh yeah history comes too uh -huh. so like it's like six subjects in total but if you take like extra foreign language test it would be like seven okay so one thing about this is that the 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 entire country is organized on this day right. around this test so like the plane <laughs> Yeah, they do not run the plane on that day, like that time. Like so, plane because of the flying. noise. So okay, <laughs> meaning so they they reroute air traffic. Mm -hmm. Even like companies, like they do not go to company on the day because of the traffic. So in the morning, in order to to ensure that all the students make it to the exam on time, everybody in society, mm -hmm. like companies and businesses and organizations, right. start work later on that day to make sure everybody gets yeah. there. Schools are off, and like all the teachers and like other students, they just go and cheer up so, for like their seniors. So I have a couple photos I want to show you. So right. this is like <laughs> like entering the exam, right? This is. Uh, like people cheering on. So these would be people from your school cheering on the seniors who are taking this. Or here's another, here's an, another one. Right. Like, what's that sign say? 
So let's go like Yonsei University because it's one of the top schools there. Yeah. Man, dude, that's, dude, you have a question? Uh, so like s talking about Hagwons and like the continued like after school schooling and all that and hearing it going to 2, 3 a.m. Like I know that even in the U.S., the high schools have like a massive problem with students excuse me, students not getting enough sleep. Yeah. Is it like just across like even the whole population, like the younger population in Korea? And like, I guess, is it even worse than here? There's actually, a, I can answer that if I could. Even at the work level, there's actually a condition that Korea is really working with that of people who are just perpetually sleep deprived. And so people get into these cycles of sleep deprivation, and it's really a problem for large segments of the Korean population. And it starts at a very young age, and it goes on to people who are, you know, like my age. Because you're not just studying now, you're also working that hard. Hmm. Bro. Um, so I personally studied in an international baccalaureate uh, program. And for what I know, the highest scores are always from Korea. Um, do is IB a big a big thing in Korea, or is it just like a small p part of the population that do it? Like, seems like um, IB schools in Korea they have only like small population of students. It's very competitive to get there, and it's a privilege that like most people, if they get into like those colleges, it's their like privilege. Their parents gonna be proud of you. Like if you go to like Seoul National University, your school's gonna have like flying cars for you. So you, right. So there are three, the, the, there are three, the three top universities in Korea, they're called the Sky, the Sky University. So it's, yeah. it's, it's Seoul, Seoul National, Seoul Korea National Korea. Korean University and Yonsei University. Mm -hmm. Those are top three. That's where everybody wants to go. So like back in high school, like there was a senior who got like hundreds on like each subject in like Suneng. And like in that period, like like the price of like our region, like apartments, they got really high for like certain amount of time because like people thought like if they moved to like specific region, like wait, their kids would be like. <laughs> yeah, wait, if they moved to your apartment complex, yeah. like it was in the water or so something. So it was a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, isn't this isn't the world awesome, man? Bro, go ahead, man. So, um, since y'all came to America and stuff, how was the transition? Like, with y'all heavy schedule learning in Korea, how was the transition for the schedule of American learning? How easy was that for y'all? Dude, Jun Ho just woke up like an hour ago, yeah, man. He didn't. Even, <laughs> he's he's like he's like dealing with his sleep deprivation. For <laughs> Yeah, how is the trans? How about for you two guys? Like, how is the transition? So I came in U.S. when I was 15. I went to ninth grade to high school in a very small city in North Carolina. Wait, um, so you did half of your high school in Korea? Yeah, I went to high half school for one semester in Korea, and then I quit school, and then I moved to U.S. Dude, how, just, okay, just talk about that transition, going from that high school semester in Korea to the high so, school semester in a small actually, town. Actually, I was not really doing good in Korea, you know, in education-wise, and then my brother, I have older brother who goes to uh, Georgia State, and then he went to U.S. Uh, a year ago, mm -hmm. like, a year before me so i just follow him yeah got you so yeah go ahead um for me it's my second year here in united states i finished my high school in my home country south korea but i used to live in canada when i was very young so it's okay for me to like adapt here in the united states wait and what why'd you go to canada oh my dad he works in a bank and he yeah he got transferred there for got like a few years so it was a great opportunity for me to like um, live abroad at a very right. young age. So Che, how was the transition for you? Because you say your parents didn't want you to, they didn't want you to go through that. Like how, did you go to an IB school by the way? In yeah, Cambodia? I went to an IB school in Cambodia. 
Can you yeah. say what that is to people who don't know? Oh, it's an it's an international baccalaureate program f that goes on for two years, and you h throughout that two the diploma program you have to take six subjects a subject in like each like so group each six group like a language literature a second language a si on individuals and societies science math and like arts subject and then you get to like choose from the pool of subjects you have within got each you. like yeah, category got you okay yeah and at the end of that two years course you would have to take a final exam and until then you have to like complete a project for each subject to write like a whole report and then along with like what's it called extended essay yeah. and so so this is good for folks who like you know you have this idea that if you're if you're really only focused on for this is for the americans by the way because if you're not from the u.s you have an under, a understanding of these kinds of things but if you're from the u.s it's really good to just open your mind up that there's a whole world of things happening out there that you know we have this idea that you know the, uh, uh, that there's a lot going on out there that you are not part of. Let me just say it like that. Hey, can we go with, so school, so education and teachers, I wanna put this, so Jun, when I was in Korea, Jun Ho and I went to this uh, Incheong International High School and I gave a talk there. And you can see me somewhere in the middle. I think I'm in the, oh yeah, you can see me. There, there I am, you can, right there dude and so 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 teachers are really revered in korea right not like here like those of you who are going into education maybe you want to be teachers it's like you're not going into it because teachers have such high status and so on but in korea they do right can you and i, I want to show this photo because it's an you know an indication of okay so for in south korea if you're really educated you're classified as like um upper level and yeah um students really really liked you and like um you realized that um a lot of students were actually they were really good at english and then they they asked a lot of questions to you so dude I, these students asked questions of me that i couldn't answer there were 15 and there were 15 year olds asking me questions to which i didn't have an answer there was one question about on uh, about u.s foreign policy as it relates to china these are 15 year olds right 16 year olds and and i and i almost had to do a call in to my friend who's the national security advisor to the white house on china and i'm like hang on a sec y'all i get, i'm gonna have to call her to get an answer to this question because i can't answer that question I mean, this is what i do for a living and i'm like y'all are like You've just like, blown me away with this, right? And so that's my experience. But the idea is that teachers are, are revered, right? Like it, they're really elevated, have really high status. Um, hey, I want to go to a, a slightly different direction here. Um, can we go to, the, go to the next slide? You know, you all, you know, in East Asian cultures, like you have a very much a a community-oriented moral order like the sense of right and wrong is really built around what's right and wrong for the community and you know here in the west it's much more individualist oriented moral order right like what's right and wrong for me like the the, the most the most important thing or the the best way to have like an organized society is have each person put themselves out front in some way can you say a few things about this do you, do you have any does do anyone want to like just throw something out like wait, can i throw a couple things out actually can you go to the next slide um can you i want to play this video by the way i don't know if you if you'll be able to click on it and play it. but by the way i would so i went up to the dmz with some friends and what what's interest the dmz is the demilitarized zone up with north korea and um, so this is the end. This is South Korea here. And once you get to the end of South Korea, like everything is all, everything's on a map and so on. And once you get to North Korea, there's like nothing. So this is the, this is a picture of the, 
of the, the, the map, and I'm in the car, back seat of the car taking a photo. There's like nothing. North Korea, it's like it doesn't even exist. It's just nothing, right? And so anyway, but I want to show you this. This is, um, hey, by the way, make sure, hey, don't put this on the stream, by the way. Yeah, do not, yo, do not put this on the stream. Um, what's uh, what I want to ask you all this is in Addis Ababa and I was at this intersection I did not I didn't take this this video um, but what's interesting here is no dude listen man no go ahead play it again what's most interesting for you all is there I sat at this intersection my wife and I did for a while there's not a single horn honking. There's no noise. It's this, this intersection is as silent as this video right here. Nobody is honking their horns. And this is Ethiopia, right? It's just a different way of being in the world. Like, look at that. Can you imagine? No one is honking their horns. And I'm telling you, they're not. I didn't take the video, but I sat at that intersection long enough that I can tell you that he didn't. So... So the other thing is, this was my experience in Seoul, right? Lots of traffic in Seoul. I, I kept saying, every time I was in a car, I would say to people, yo, I can't, how come nobody's honking their horns? And they'd say, oh my God, no, it's terrible. The traffic's terrible. People are, and I'm like, they're not. It's as much time as I spent in cars, which was probably about a total in my two weeks in Seoul last May, maybe I was in cars for like 10, 12 hours. I heard two horns. That's it. So that's an indication of this community-oriented moral order. Can you, do you have anything you would add? Wait, no, actually, there's one more thing. Sorry. Go to the next slide. This is a meal right for these. I'm with some friends here. So here's, we're all, these are the dishes for everybody. Basically, we're just eating. It's a communal meal. Like, we're just eating together. You don't order your own separate dish. You order the... And the other cultures do this as well, obviously. It's not just Korea, but it's very community-oriented. Like, you're all participating in that. Do you... Okay, now I'm going to ask. Do you have anything you would add to that? Like, the community orientation, right? Like, where you... You're not necessarily putting yourself up front. You're like, do you, do you, do you even see that? You okay, so, um, like for example, when we go to like cafe or restaurant, we don't steal stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like, even if it's on the table, like it's a lot that you know we don't touch others like even though like how expensive it is like we don't steal it i'd like to add on it yeah so like when i was back in korea i was studying at a cafe with my friend and then i just left to like go to the bathroom and then once i came back just one guy came over to me and like whispered me like my friend she like touched my stuff and i was like oh she's my friend <laughs> yeah <laughs> Whoa, that your friend, he saw your friend touch your yeah. stuff, like your book bag. Like he thought she was stealing something. Yeah. And then like he came over to my friend and then he was like, oh, it's not your stuff. Whoa. And my friend was like, oh, okay. Whoa. <laughs> did, did you? Um, no, I just wanted to add like in Korea, I um, recently there's a lot, there are a lot of stores without a cashier. So you just have yeah. a machine and people would have to go grab like whatever they want from like the shelves and then just check out themselves without anyone supervising in the store. And it, the stores would go on for 24 hours and just have a single security camera, but people wouldn't steal. They would just check out themselves and leave. Like get what you want, pay for it and leave. No one steals it. You just would never do. There was one of the, there was an ice cream shop across from where I was staying. Yeah. And I couldn't figure out how to, the ice cream looked awesome, but I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I never got ice cream. I'm like, oh shit, man, this is a drag. Yeah, okay. So for example, um, 
All right, I want to do one other thing here really fast. We're just going to go in a different, very, now we're going to go in a totally different direction. Can you just put up the confusion? One more, one more. Okay, so listen, confu- so Joseon Dynasty, like Korean philosophy, very much in the 500 years of the Joseon Dynasty, really adopted Confucianism, right? And kindness toward others, doing what's right, and loyalty towards superiors. And I want to just do something here, if we could. Can you go to the, go to the next slide? So, um, Jun Ho and I, uh, we were sitting at this cafe and we had a beer. And, and, and I said, and he was showing me how to drink together, like how we had to drink. And I said, dude, we have to do that in class right? We have, to, we have to reproduce this because, so we have, we have about 10 minutes left, and I want to see if, I'm going to pull the table up here, and maybe it'll just be a couple of us, and here, can you just, let me just pull the table up, or it should, should we use the table? Grab, grab that in, yeah. yeah. Okay, so here. So I want to, because the, this is the, the piece about elders, right? So this is soju, by the way. Soju, if you don't know, soju is the most popular spirit in the world by far. Of the top three spirits in the world. No, no, dude. So of the top three spirits in the world, two... Two of them are so brands of soju. Okay, so here. Okay, I need a I need a chair. Bro. So first off, if we're wait, we only have we'll see so you're underage, so you can't drink anyway. Alright. So listen. So we have soju on the table, right? And Tell, tell us what has to happen. What's going on here? Okay, so I may not be all right, but like generally, um, it has to be adult, like pouring me soju first, because I can't drink it by myself. So you can't drink it by yourself? So, so the oldest person? Yeah, so you have to... All right. But I can't... But I, I pour for you. Yeah, but and I have to like, receive your um, soju... Like, Like that? Wait, can you? You can use the microphone. So you receive it like that? Yeah, you have to give it to me. You have to use your both hands to receive. To receive? Uh-huh. Okay. And then when younger ones pour drink to elders, they have to use both hands too. You don't and have to use both hands. And do you have to keep the in the label? Can I see the... Oh, yeah, that's... Um, Wait, can you say it in the mic? You say it in the mic. Um... You have to cover the label. I didn't know that, but um, (laughs) (laughs) you said um, you have to cover the label, the logo. Okay, so you have these. So you have two other people here. So you, you, but you pour me first because I'm the elder, right? Okay. But what about them? Who pours for them? Whoever. (laughs) It doesn't matter. Yeah, but you can't pour for yourself, really, right? You have to pour for other people. So like, it's okay, like it, you know, Leah and I, Leah and I are like friends, so it's okay to like um, give our, give soju like this. But if I'm giving it to like you or like um, someone older than adult, I have to be like very polite. Okay, and then you, for him? Yeah, so like it's okay to give it like this. All right. Okay. So now who? So this is what I was blown away by. All right, so I'm going to, if I'm going to drink, mm-hmm. we're so going to drink. Y- you hold your glass, and since you're an adult, my glass has to be lower than yours. So I should like. And it's same with. Okay. And you get to. Well, we, like, mostly go with. But, like, in most cases, like, the boss or, like, the elder person Shouts out the slogan. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, have the talk. Wait, hang on. Can we, can you come up here? 
can you hop up here, bro? Okay, I'm going to let him take your place, okay. all right? You, I meant to bring you up. Have him sit. Why don't you sit there? Have a seat, man. Bro, <laughs> tell him your name, by the way. What's up, y'all? I'm, I'm Taylor Gang. I'm fed to God. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> from Pittsburgh. Yeah, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Dude. All right, so listen, man. Okay, so you're... So he, so I drink first, but the, remember the thing about you turning, you can't yeah. look at me? Yeah, so like, um, so suppose we did cheers. You can drink it whatever you want, but yeah. I have to turn my back and drink it like this. You have to cover the glass. I cover the glass? No, no. The, he I, does. Yeah, I have to turn does my back. Does he have to do that also? Well, if you're drinking with you're Sam. Younger you, you're younger than me, bro, so you have to turn away. Turn away from the white guy, bro. All right, <laughs> you can't look at the white guy. We're we're back. This is Jim Crow. Now we're back there. <laughs> it's Korea Crow, actually. All right, so wait. All three of you turn away from me. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. All right. All right. It's just water, dude. That was water. Yeah. All right. Okay. So now. All right. So wait. Let's say he wants to. Can he pour? He could pour next? Yeah, I mean, uh, like, you know, like, it depends on the circumstance, but if you want to be, like, respectful and polite, yeah. like, um, he can pour it to you, and you can pour it to him. Okay. Well, would I go first? Yeah. So, wait, hold on. Cause I'm, their, I'm their elder, though, so how would they pour it for me? Well, yeah, so he, how old are you? 29. So he's 29. Mm -hmm. So, so therefore, he's you. Do you have to... Yeah, so I'm, you have I'm to younger. show respect for him? Of course. Yeah. yeah? Oh, yeah. So, okay. So I can pour for him. Right? And he can pour for me? Yeah. So uh, like it's gaining, uh, gaining a relationship and bond. So you guys get close while drinking together. Dude. And then these guys? Wait. Then I could pour for you. But I don't have to cover that. He only had to cover it because he's pouring mine, right? Okay. All right. And you guys still have to look away again. Can he make a toast? Even though I'm here, like, is he allowed to make a toast? Okay, I'll, what do I, how would I let him make a toast? <laughs> no, you got you to gotta be above, below mine. Okay. And then... And he can make a toast to you guys? Yeah, I mean, it really depends on the circumstance. So, like, if, if, if the, like, um, if it's really fun, like, we, we can drink it what, what, whatever we want. Not whatever we want. Like, I mean, you're older than me, so I have to, like, be careful. And, yeah. Um, you, got, you all have to watch. Yeah. But if, I, but if I'm in control, like... But it, what if I stop drinking? Do you all have to stop drinking? I believe so, yeah. So I set the tone for everything. Mm -hmm. It's like in Ru it's very similar in Russia, right? When in Russia, when the first person stops drinking, everybody goes home. So like you, that's why you just keep drinking and drinking and drinking, right? If you stop, if you stop drinking, and then mostly elder people, they, if they don't want to drink, they just left. They just go home. And then uh, the right, younger yeah. one stays, whoever wants to drink more, yeah. like they drink afterwards. Okay, I got you. So. And then I might slip out. Yeah. All right. So then we can, we'll do another, we'll do a toast. You guys, can you turn away again? You always turn away? Uh, wrong. That's awesome. Then that, that's how you feel like you're king. You know what I mean? Wait till, you, <laughs> wait till you're really the old. Wait, so, <laughs> wait, so if he was the oldest here, then you would turn away from him. Dude, I want you to feel that. <laughs> just to have Koreans not looking at you. Just all right, man. You, you got a toast. You're up above. Don't forget that. Oh, all that right. feel good. All right, there we go. Dude, how's that feel, man? It's awesome, isn't it? Dude, yeah, that's cool, man. It's so, it, th I think the thing that struck me, Juno, when you and I were, um, were sitting at that, at that cafe, we're just, every time we drank, it was a whole beer. 
like every time he drank from his beer, he like turned away from me. And, and I, f I started feeling kind of self-conscious of this, you know, because like I don't do that. And but but then at some time I started to, bro, I started to feel that. Like, yeah, I, I got, I can, I can kind of dig this. You know what I mean? All right, man. Hey, bro, really fast. Um, come back up here really quickly. So just what, so tell us about what, what's your story, man? What are you doing here? Oh, uh, so uh, I'm up here with my brother, Brad, man. I'm, a, uh, I'm the academic guy for today. What's going on, everybody? So my story is I'm an artist. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm signed to Wiz Khalifa, Taylor Gang, for y'all who don't know who that is. And, you know, I'm always up Penn State, so we were just coming up here like, yo, just chime in on the class and just get some game. So I got some game from my guy Sam right here. And I'm up here just cooling with y'all. So that's pretty much my story. I'm from the north side of Pittsburgh, just like y'all. Wanted to go to college, couldn't, but it don't matter. We're here. So, so what'd you get out of today, man? What'd you, what'd you get? Uh, my kids need to stay in school a little longer because they on us. They on America's neck with the academics. So that's what I got from this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. If you if you like take the Korean thing on, you got to You got to Like yeah, they might they might have to go to some hogwans or something after yeah, school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and before school. And before school. So, and on the weekends, right? Eight and to ten don't sound too bad. That's a break. <laughs> dude, see, yeah, you don't need babysitters, man. You At all. I got the teachers. Hogwans. Yeah. All right, man. Hey. Thanks, y'all. Hey.